everybody, this is Carlos Azalor, and welcome to the G2 podcast. Today, we have what I consider to be yet another legend. This guy, I know him for a really long time. You guys know him also probably for a long time, especially if you follow League of Legends. His name is Travis G. I learned it today that he just likes to be called Travis G. Actually, that's, that's not true. I'm, I'm making this up. But Travis, Travis G is with us. My man. Travis G is here. Uh, <laughs> great, glad to be here. I'm I'm just adopting the Travis G because you go with Carlos R. So That's... I feel like I have to. It, whenever I'm in in your city in your office, I feel like I need to adopt your mannerisms, maybe. Bro, I mean, I mean, honestly, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, Carlos R. Travis. I mean, that sounds pretty bossy. I mean, yeah. Carlos R. Not so much. Carlos R. Like like some Mexican. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> it does sound kind of. It does sound kind of. It doesn't sound too bossy. Yeah. Um. Travis G, on the other hand. Yeah, G is a it's a good uh, last initial, I think. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's maybe my only reason I've been successful to date is because I have <laughs> G as my last initial. That, that that makes I mean sorry that makes no sense. Too. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. I just figured we start off the podcast in a strong way. So yeah. you're actually our first ever uh, in person uh, invite. Yeah, I the came podcast. all the way to Berlin for this. <laughs> That's just for the show. And thankfully, MSI was happening at the same time, <laughs> so I could also cover it. But uh, super happy to be here for the show. You know, we bought all this stuff just because you were coming. Because typically, this is just this is only one stuff. Ah, uh, yes. But you needed the backdrop for me too. No, absolutely. This is all for you. Yeah. So oh, thank you. you. Thank you. So, so you're here in MSI. How are you enjoying so far? Uh, it's getting better. Uh, the first two <laughs> days were pretty rough. Uh, you know, I it's it was a. Um, 50-50 on whether or not I was going to come cover MSI. And then I thought, well, you know, what if Team Liquid has some really good run and I'm not here for my boy Peter. Um, and then, of course, the first two days they went 0-4. So, Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been painful, but uh, starting to feel a little bit uh, better. Even in a world where they don't make it out tomorrow, I think. Uh, still happy that they, they've they uh, won a couple games. Yeah, but the, the trend is, is upwards. I mean, yeah. everything can happen. Like, you know, that's the beauty of esports. Single day, BO1, yeah. everything can happen. Well, and there was a world, by the way, where if they lost today, I think uh, tomorrow no one would, we'd already know what teams are going. Uh, that's It would just true. be proceeding. So uh, at least it also kept the tournament very interesting. That's very nice. Yeah. So um, how much are you enjoying? But actually, you know, first time you, you told me we spoke before, you told me that the previous time you were here in Berlin, it was uh, for 2015 Worlds. 2015 Worlds, yeah. yeah. And worlds typically happens when it's already like fucking cold yeah. here. It was it was pretty chilly. You yeah. freeze your tits off here. Yes, I wouldn't I wouldn't use that language, but yes, I was I was quite cold. <laughs> but you do. It's yeah. literal. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's literal. Um, and right now it's probably the best weather yeah. you'll find in Berlin throughout the whole year. Yeah. Like hands down, you won't find better weather than this. Yeah. And as a result, you have uh, the people from Germany, and uh, from Berlin in particular, being nicer than usual yeah typically that's not what you find like you see people hey good morning guten morgen yeah, people uh, have been very friendly uh and, you, and you're telling me that that's just not the case that they're not normally this friendly look i'm not i'm not trying to generalize anything yeah. okay but but i'm gonna say something it, it may be true that okay. the pragmatic uh kind of uh, embracing myself yeah you know, you know, no but the pragmatic german culture yeah they're very pragmatic and you know, they love you, but they, they show it through different means. Yeah. Not through a beautiful good morning. Yeah. You know? it's, a, it's different. It's a different culture. Yeah. So when it's sunny outside, people just change their minds completely. Yeah. They just become great people, great human beings, you know, and they're like, good morning. And you just feel you just feel embraced by their culture. Yeah. Typically, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, I've, I've felt embraced. <laughs> Actually, it's really nice. Uh, uh, Broden, who is uh, many people that watch my content know my producer. He's off, off camera right now. But... He, uh, he and I, we were hit pretty hard with jet lag the first couple of days. So we missed like the nice evenings with like the sunset and, and all that. We were just sleeping through that. And then last night was the first time we'd had a chance to uh, experience just how nice and pleasant it is here in the evening. It's, it's really nice. It, it is wonderful. Sun right? stays out for a while. You can go out and get a good dinner and eat outside. It's really, really fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Although you have to carry cash with you. You know yeah. how it works here. Yes. I, I noticed that. I learned that last night. I had to go to the ATM. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they, they don't pick up credit card money. But anyway. Yeah. MSI is obviously the the big the big topic here and the main reason that you're here, of course. Sure. Apart from, of course, the, the being podcast. on the show, yeah, Absol absolutely, it's very important. Um, what do you think about? I mean, in general, about MSI uh, as as a tournament? Yeah, uh, I I kind of miss the All Star event way back in the day, uh, the very first All Star event that was Riot's first uh, major international 
uh, event that took place in China. I, I really like the vibe of it. So I've always kind of felt like MSI, uh, maybe not as exciting or as interesting as the original All-Star. There's a bit of a charm uh, to that that I just don't have any anymore. Um, and I, I generally do enjoy MSI as this kind of cool checkpoint halfway through yep. the year to get a sense of how everything's going. Um, I have uh, I've been very vocally uh, whiny about the fact that it's half group stage is happening in the EU LCS studio, which is no disrespect to the wonderful EU LCS studio, but kind of weird to see uh, some of the best teams competing in front of 170 people. But uh, other than that, it's been really cool. I mean, I think this tournament in particular, uh, we saw King Zone come in. They're not dominating uh, like a lot of people expected them to. Flash holes have been looking good. Uh, uh, again, like I would have liked to see more more. Uh, I don't know, strength out of Team Liquid early on, but it does feel like there's a, a sense that anything can happen at this year's MSI. I mean, it, you know, you have in front of you the proof of it. Yeah. <laughs> the worst and one of the best years, actually, yes. for a Western team as well. Yes. Um, uh, but you allowed uh, CLG North America to have one of their best tournaments ever. That's true. Uh, you cleared the path for them uh, very respectfully. So. And then and then after... Uh, then after Oh, you're fixing my shit. Thanks. Yeah, well, sorry, he's he's uh, he's, he's got, a strong man yeah, in the yeah. in the room. Yeah, uh, he made me fanboy, Jim. Yeah, oh, by yes. looking at his muscles, and yes. I was like, yeah. I, I feel inspired. I've been here for about an hour, and you brought up his muscles once every five minutes. I think. Yeah, so I mean, it's a very. I it's, wonder what it's like. It must be hard for you guys to have a meeting in this office. Uh, no, it's 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 complicated because yeah. I, I nonstop look at his muscles, and he's like, "Look at my face. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Yeah." He has difficult. beautiful green eyes too. Yes. Lothar. Yes. Yes. We could go on and on forever about <laughs> Lothar's appearance. Anyway, in regards to, to, to MSI, look, um, I I feel like there there must be some level of um, unreliable unreliance. Is that a word? Unreliability. Unreliability. Yeah, maybe that's a little created bit. by the fact that it happens right after kind of the split. Yeah. Uh, that its importance, at least for the one team that plays it, is not that crucial yeah. coming into Worlds, for example. It is it is good, but it's not that crucial. There's not much like, online. In exactly. MSI. So so yeah. and and on top of that, there's like the, the BO1s and the fact that there's only one team per region, which means that a lot of playstyles like there's just a lot of variables and you know that uh, that makes the tournament really hard to predict. Yeah. Um do you think that's generally a, th- a good thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, it adds a, a degree of excitement and that you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I, if you look at it, it is the first real international event to happen since worlds. And, you know, obviously we have, uh, the changing of the game so much during that time and reshuffling of rosters. And, and so really no one knows what to expect whenever you go into MSI, which I think is, is kind of exciting. Whereas I think there, you probably, people tend to have a pretty good, a good idea of how the teams are going to look whenever you go into worlds. Right. Uh, that's true. Uh, so it's it's a bit of a different beast in that way, um, and so yeah, I, I do find that that's kind of fun because like, you know a lot of people were asking me like how how well is uh, Team Liquid going to do or who are the favorites uh, at MSI? And it's just really hard to predict going into this because you have uh, very little baseline. You know, I think only the top analysts can really look at the vods and and get a sense of like how the different play styles are going to do against each other. But even then, it's kind of a bit of a mystery. Yeah, I, I, I was a bit wondering. I mean. I, I, I did think before the beginning of the tournament that uh, Team Liquid was actually ahead of Fnatic, actually. Yeah, yeah. You t- you messaged me as we started talking about this, and you were kind of consoling me. You said, like, I yeah. would have never thought that Team yeah, Liquid true. would end up so weak uh, compared to Fnatic. But yeah, now it seems like it's getting better. Honestly, yeah. th- that's the tricky thing about these tournaments, that you start with the wrong foot, and again, I'm talking from one experience. Yeah. You start with the wrong foot, and you end up G2-8. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> unfortunately. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's it's five days, right? And so it's kind of interesting in that by the second day, Team Liquid had lost four games. And in a, in a broad sense, like four games is not that many games, you know. Uh, but already it felt like they were just kind of out of the tournament. So it's, it's, true, it's the, uh, you know, pulling back, it requires a lot of resilience. It's not yeah. easy. Not easy yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, they still have two complicated... Two, who, do they, who do they play tomorrow? Uh, I believe uh, Flash Zone? Wolves and RNG. Oh, Flash Wolves and RNG. Yeah, they played R- or they played King Zone. That's, that's a hard day. Yeah. And Fnatic plays uh, easy, right? Easier. It's Fnatic plays um, uh, the guys that are last e- Evo. Evos. Yeah, Evos. Yeah, Evos. Uh, and who, do, who else do they play? Do they play King Zone? I'm I think trying they, to remember King, yeah, they play King Zone yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, they play King Zone. So that that will so be that, difficult for them, but yeah, but the other one should be. Should, and if Fnatic wins, then Team Liquid is out already, yeah. right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Team Liquid has to. 
two zero, and then even right. then they and don't then have everything. Yeah, yeah. Oof. So it's gonna, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. Um, so do you speak with a double lift? Uh, a little bit. I did actually. It was really fun. I got to do a. I did a kind of impromptu interview with him and Reckless the other day, and people really liked that because Reckless just kind of like entered the interview and and they were kind of talking. So uh, afterwards, I had a that happens to you a lot, right? When yeah. Just... Well, somewhat intentionally, I think that that's <laughs> the people love those types of interviews. But um, I I intentionally actually Reckless proposed it to me. He said, "Do you want to do another interview with me and Peter?" Because people really like that. So I sat down with both of them after their game today, which was kind of fun to talk to them that's after nice. they went head to head. Uh, and so I talked to him. Uh, look, I think uh, all of Team Liquid, they look a little shell-shocked. I think they're really happy they won today. But um, I think, you know, after you go 0-4 the first day and they had the complication with their support player, um, it's hard not for them to feel, you know, like a little bit of a, in a daze, right? Like are yeah, we Whatever happened there. Like, I mean, he, he Ole was playing amazingly I, beforehand. And I don't know what could go so wrong. I mean, I don't know the in and outs. Of course, if they took the decision, it's for a reason. Sure. But... Something must have yeah. I interviewed really their hand. so I interviewed their assistant coach yesterday, Dodo, mm-hmm. um, because Kane uh, his English is not as as good as Dodo's, um, and Dodo was explaining to me that there was almost like a I don't know if it's a panic attack, but there was a a pretty Ooh. big like uh, sort of mental issue that occurred with uh, Ole yeah after the the first day, and that it wasn't just uh, on stage, it was also as we at like in scrims afterwards and so there was kind of a it's unclear right now if it was ole or if it was the team uh, or maybe just both that there was a consideration of like all right maybe we need to just let him step out for a game so that he can like collect himself so um interesting yeah it's hard to say i mean only only team liquid will really ever know like how how much of an issue that was but um, I, you know, you kind of understand that there was maybe a bigger picture there than like, well, we lost two games. Let's put in the sub. You know, I think, I think there was more. No, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you don't take such decision after yeah. the guy, how, how the guy played, um, during the season, but yeah. it is, it is true that in these events, having the luxury of a sixth player, sixth capable player, even seven players to some degree, it's, it's just yeah. super impactful. Uh, because then only then you can get out of these issues. Yeah. Like if a guy completely tilts out of his mind yeah. during the tournament is so hard to get that guy on board again. Let me turn this around on you. I, I was talking to Broden uh, the other day because he was he is still somewhat unfamiliar with he, – he's been following esports for a while but didn't know the international formats as well. Who's and this? Broden, my producer. Oh, Broden, okay. And he was uh, asking me, he's like, okay, so they've got one sub. So is it like a sub who can play all five? roles or yeah, that's not how it's, it works. Like, it's not how it works it's like uh, well they bring a support sub and it's like okay well what happens if something goes wrong with the adc or the mid laner do you think it's do you think that there should almost be like a second line because what ha- well, i mean in a world where something you know your your mid laner gets uh food poisoning and can't compete and you've had you brought a sub it's for only a support role it's kind of a weird matchup where you've now got two subs. I mean, uh, here's the thing. Subs. This is the same story as probably if you go 100 years back into yeah. soccer games. If you broke your boots, your soccer boots, yeah. in the middle of the game, like there's a very likeliness, uh, the, the likeliness of you not having a, a, another pair of boots ready yeah. was actually very high. So it just means that with this, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain that while it's not a good thing necessarily, of course, uh, it's a normal thing when you're growing from something that doesn't exist, you know? Sure. So this challenge I see here um, uh, with esports and subs is that how do you, uh, how are you able to incentivize having a really high level player yeah. on the bench when the very nature of each game requires a level of team play, like hours and hours and hours of playing together? Yeah. Uh, you're only like five players in the team. It's just so hard to change a single player sure. and expect to play the same way. So how do, how do you incentivize that good players are on the bench? Well, it's kind of weird because at a certain point in time, it's like why bring a sub at all? Like if you if you are going to end up in a situation where you are you're so screwed that you're like bringing in two support players because your mid laner is sick. Like mm-hmm. um, I and. And to your point, like in a world where you do bring five subs and you bringing one into the roster, like the team is now way worse because they don't have that teamwork built. Uh, it's kind of weird because it almost feels like having one sub is almost kind of pointless unless you get lucky like Team Liquid did 
uh, and you... That's actually, in a way, it's kind of lucky, you're yeah. right. Yeah, because I mean, imagine if they... Because everybody brings, like, like uh, two years ago, CLG brought a second AD carry, but there's no explanation for why they brought... There's like, literally no yeah, explanation. It's like, well, we had this guy, so and he he's streams for us, and he, he could be like a backup or something, so you bring him, but who knows if it's your mid laner or your top laner or something that's going to have an issue. So um, it's just kind of a, a weird situation where at a certain point in time, I wonder, like, what is the value? You, you bring him just so that you can play out the match? I mean, I guess it's just kind of a weird situation. It is very weird, um, and I think everything starts from the way lower leagues are set up. Yeah. And I, and I do think that to some degree, um, in North America, we do have a, um, or you do have a... Uh, we, yes. Uh, come to the dark side, Carlos, <laughs> yes. Or you do have a, I think, a good system. Um, it's starting, but I think it's a good system. Yeah. Um, and in, in that system in which, you know, you can play against your sister team to train and so on, it actually gets easier yeah. to introduce someone into, into, into your game, right? Yeah. But in a, in a place in which EULCS or NALCS were before, was before, which is, you know, the Challenger Series, like all the best players were there. Yeah. And in Europe today, all the best players that are not in the EULCS are in the local leagues. Sure. So how exactly are you going to bring those guys to become your second team yeah. if they can actually earn more money and play official games every week? That yeah, it's kind of weird in that you're kind of competing. At, you have like local competition for these players. Exactly. So it becomes yeah. like really hard. Yeah. To um to build, you know, a a, a ten man team. What if you? That you can in interchange. What if you had a team in one of these other leagues? Like, what if the G two Academy team was actually one in like the Spanish league or something? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I don't. You, I don't know if that's a crazy thing. As an American, I'm you, just speaking. You still like, have yeah, to comply with the local rules. Uh, yeah. Like okay. sixty percent of the players must be Spanish. Uh, so okay. you you are already at a disadvantage. Yeah. Because Spanish Spain has forty four million people. Yeah. That's nothing, right? Um, so I'm just saying, man, it's 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 tough. I'm just saying that, especially for Europe, it's really tough. Yeah. I I, I really wonder how how we're gonna fix that. Um, but um yeah everything in europe seems more complicated yeah but which means that you guys don't refrigerate your milk oh i do man I, you do I, i'm more i'm i'm more us than, okay. than you think well, i'm glad you do that's been it's upsetting to me every time i walk by a, a <laughs> restaurant here and there's just the milk is just sitting out i i i, I can't explain that either yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the good thing about european people you know when we make it here yeah then we go to the us and kick ass okay yes yes because, because it's, it's, you, it's such a difficult it's an, environment here yeah. it's, it's actually uh, it's really tough here yeah. in, the, in you fight against um things that you shouldn't even have to fight in the first place yeah just by being in europe um, which then you go to the U.S. and it's a compl it's a single market, single language, single culture. Yeah, I guess people from Texas are different than people from California, yeah, but very different. Very Most different. Of the time yeah. At Austin, yeah. But it's part of this. You know, it's the same country, the same language. Right. Many things are the same. You know, everybody goes to. Uh, we even have Jack Canada, which is or... basically mini U.S. You know, we just <laughs> add them in. They all speak our language and everything, except for go. the French Canadians. We don't, <laughs> we don't count them. <laughs> no. The Quebec. Yeah. Um, who do you think is going to win? Uh, oh. say? Let's get bold, bold uh, yeah, going straight into it. Um, I, uh, Team Liquid, they're going to go through. It should be fine. Everything's going to be good. No, no, so, wait, wait. Uh, so tomorrow they, they uh, will go to kidding. zero. I mean, the, okay. safe, the safe option is King Zone, although I do think that they've... Uh, it, there was a weird thing where everybody... Look, they were very good in their, their region, no doubt, but like uh, it was kind of a strange thing where everybody just acted as if they were SKT and that they were going to show up and dominate. Um, and I think that they've looked pretty vulnerable or not pretty vulnerable, but fairly vulnerable in the, uh, in the group stage. We'll see if they can turn it on whenever they get to best of fives, which, uh, of course would make a lot of sense, but flash Wolves has been looking uh, like they're holding their own and everybody else looks like they're trying to figure out what they're doing. Um, you know, obviously team liquid's taking a while, but, uh, I think RNG, which I think a lot of people wondered, uh, if they were going to be really dominant this, this tournament, or we're going to come in really strongly. They've shown themselves to be. Uh, week at times and, and Fnatic had a, a rough start as well. They were able to turn it around, but even then they're they're still dropping games. I mean, they dropped a game to Team Liquid today. So mm -hmm. uh, I I'm very curious. Um, I think King Zone is probably the safe bet, uh, and Flash Wolves is the as the runner up if they can somehow upset King Zone in a best of five. You know, it's um, 
it's not only the fact that you play more games in a playoff, you know, yeah. you, you, therefore the better team has higher chances of winning. Sure. But it's also the fact that these teams have been playing against each other for already 10 days, maybe. Yeah. Uh, or a week sometimes. Uh, and like first getting acclimatized, is, is that a word? Yeah. Accl- yeah. Yes. Acclimated? Acclimated, yeah. Okay. Acclimated to new play styles yeah. requires... Like you, you don't just see someone playing a different playstyle and you adapt directly. Right. You still believe that your playstyle is better, yeah. Or, or you still believe that you can counter that playstyle yeah. like, until you get into the point where you know how to counter that playstyle or adopt that playstyle yourself. That requires at least two, three weeks. Yeah. Uh, and what happens then is that once playoff starts, is when the the better teams are going to be clearly like there's a chance that both semifinals and three zero three zero. Right. Like, there's a great chance. Yeah. Because teams will learn how to you know, each other's play styles and by that time. Yeah, I mean, even at Worlds, we tend to have uh, oftentimes pretty crappy semifinals. The best part is the group phase, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, always. Yeah. It's the most exciting, for sure. You see all these weird upsets and everything. For and then, sure. And then normally you don't get a really good match until, for a while, the finals, I don't think we're very good, but uh, oftentimes you don't get a good uh, match up until the finals. And I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure that if you look at the hero's success um, in BO1s, yeah, you look at, like, Oriana must have a shitty win ratio. But then you go into playoffs and Oriana must have a pretty decent win ratio. Yeah. That is because the way you play is completely different. Like, BO1s are, like, crazy. So much stuff happening. People tip into places. Like, the mid laner ganking everywhere. Yeah. And then you go to playoffs and it was like, nothing is happening. You're like, what's going on? Like, we yeah. are 0-0, zero, zero, minute Everyone's 22. super safe, yeah. Exactly. I, and, and you don't know why, really? It's just, I, I, I it just think it's the nature of the BO1 versus BO5. Yeah, I think people just naturally, they feel like a little bit more tension. They play more conservatively. I, I'm not sure. It can be. But yeah. playoffs is the 80 carry. Uh, and like playoffs become the 80 carry plays. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, group phases are like the mid laner phase, typically, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what we see. Anyway, uh, I, I do agree with you on, on, on the Koreans taking it over again. You never yeah. know. Yeah. Um, it's a safe bet. Who finishes higher, NA or EU? Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> right now, right now, it's hard not to say EU. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, if you had asked me this on the first day, I'd have a different answer. But I would have said the same th- than you. I would have said in a uh, above EU. Yeah, because I generally thought that Team Liquid was legit, actually. Yeah, I mean, I I think uh, there was a. It's again, you never really know, but uh, they looked pretty dominant back there. They've got a lot of veterans. Um, I think that there was a, a pretty good chance, but I, nobody could have predicted sort of the mental boom that we ended up seeing. So, so talking about Team Liquid, of course, Team Liquid was um, accepted into the NALCS. Yeah, um, a lot of different teams, um, you know, uh, that were not specifically League of Legends uh, friendly before were accepted. Yeah, how like do you opti- th- optic, yeah, optic, uh, hundred thieves, um, you know, clutch gaming. Yeah. Which, um, even though Clash Gaming had nothing to do with sure, this sure. before, right? But um, there were teams that were not endemic to League of Legends per se. Yep. How do you think um, they, like, if, if if you would ask them in hindsight, hindsight, what would you think about you being part of the NLCS? Um, what do you think they would say? Oh, like now, if you ask yeah. them, yeah. like, do you have regrets in getting in or something? Not regrets, sense, but, but what do you think? You know, in hindsight, is it, yeah, you know, I think. Um, I, I, so I don't know. I haven't really talked to these guys or had a chance to interview them about this stuff. But uh, I think a lot of them probably feel pretty good. I mean, if you're 100 Thieves, you probably feel amazing right now. Mm. Um, uh, I think, doing good. I think uh, you feel great about the fact that you're building these fans. You are selling out of merchandise. You've, you've built this brand. There's a lot of uh, success that you're having with the team that you've built. I, I think with other teams, you know, one of the biggest things that I worry about is the lack of sales and sort of sponsorships that we've seen in the NALCS so far. We see, uh, I think, one additional new sponsor that's come in uh, with, I think it's, it's State Farm. I already mm-hmm. said it's Allstate or State Farm, I already get, uh, but pretty sure it's State Farm. And, uh, and then sort of like the Acer sponsorship that's held over before. Um, and so I'm just worried that the league itself is not generating the revenue that it needs to to sustain and, and make these guys feel good about the invest- investment that they made. $10 million is a lot, as you are probably complicating or contemplating yourself right now. Um, so I I don't know. I, I wonder what kind of conversations are happening behind the scenes um, between the owners. I, I don't, I'm sure that none of them are ready to uh, do an LCS forever campaign or anything like that. But uh, I do I do believe that 
probably with Overwatch League happening in, in LA and, and not having the same numbers as LCS, but uh, seemingly having more success on the sales front uh, and per perhaps the revenue front that uh, perhaps there's a lot of, of pressure uh, on, on Riot from the new guys. Which is, which is a good and a bad thing, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bad thing, it's the obvious, right? Because maybe the expectations were higher, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good thing because the upside is there, right? And if, if people would still, in hindsight, say, I would have still bought it, bought it. Yeah. Even though maybe revenue wasn't on par, I don't know. Yeah. Um, then that means that um, it's a fucking good product. Yeah. And as a result, once I mean, those numbers come in. And we've only had about three or so months of actual like league play. These that's guys true. are invested for a long term. You know, like if you're looking at this from a startup perspective, you don't start freaking out three months into your startup if you haven't found I mean, all the success that you need. You know, this is, you, you, you would have so many heart attacks. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, I, well, I don't think uh, anybody should should be looking at this right now and, and be freaking out. I think they just need to figure out how to optimize it uh, to make sure that everybody's uh, finding success. And and if you look at the Riot Games uh, careers page, they've now been posting, uh, I think, a couple job postings for for people to kind of help lead the business side of the the NALCS. Now, I, I would have much rather seen those postings six months ago uh, or maybe even a year ago as they were building out uh, the franchise uh, and permanent partnership program uh, just so that you were ready to really uh, take the bull by the horns. But, uh, I mean, at least we're starting to see movement in that direction, and, and we'll see what happens. All right, very good. Yeah, you know, from from uh, from my point of view, I feel like uh, revenue is always important. Yeah. Um, but the truth is that you're buying into the actual only, I mean, yeah, this is the Overwatch League. Yeah. Those two are the only hard assets you can actually own nowadays. I mean, apart from your own brand, right? Yeah. And that has a lot of value, uh, not only uh, in terms of what you can generate as a league, but also what you can generate as a, as a team yourself, as a company yourself. Yeah. It's not the same to come in uh, to a sponsors with, with to, a, to, to a partner with, a, we have this X team in this league. It may drop out next year if one of if our best player breaks an arm, yeah. and we don't have a good replacement. Then look at this: we are going to be here for the foreseeable future. Yep. And that has infinite value. So beyond what the league can generate, my take is that it's always a good thing to own a hard asset. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. I mean, it's and this, funny. this wouldn't be a hard asset if, in, a, in a game that is unproven, but this game is going to stay here for a long time. Sure. Yeah, it's almost weird to me how quickly I've forgotten about the concept of relegation. You know, it's like, true. And especially, uh, it feels like such a bad idea. Like now that all these teams are in, it's uh, it's strange to even consider the fact that like there was a world where relegation made sense now Absolutely. I, it certainly did back in the day when you were trying to kind of call out some of the the lesser teams but um you know i, I think a, a world where 100 thieves invest as much as they did this split and then could potentially get uh relegated next split if, if things had gone poorly for them i think that's kind of a crazy world to think about and and we're not too far away from whenever that was a thing in north america it's true man yes you imagine the fact that um as tight as this eolcs was like fanatic was ahead of us by two games, I think, or three games. We were ahead of the second, just by a single game, uh, ahead of the third, sorry, by a single yeah. game. And then it was like a clusterfuck of like a lot of tight yeah. rankings, you know? Uh, that means that, you know, there's a there's a world in which um, 100 Thieves next year, I mean, next split would end up relegated. Yeah. So what is the, there's no sense in that. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter whether you're European and you like relegated. Like, there's no point to justify such thing. Yeah, I mean, we were uh, we were talking on the way over here about uh, teams looking at training facilities, and Team Liquid has one now, and uh, CLG's building theirs out. And certainly those are great facilities to have for if you're going to be in multi multiple games. But imagine a world where you are uh, Golden Guardians, and you're only, you're into, you enter the LCS, you want to be in it, and you want to invest into a, a big training facility. Uh, here in comes Los production Angeles. with... Oh, yeah, you keep turning your, your screen that way. Uh, <laughs> these ultra wide angle, uh, webcams, I think you don't want to show too much. Um, but, uh, you know, imagine a world where golden guardians comes in, they're excited to be in the league of legends, uh, championship series. They invest a million dollars or something into a training facility and then they get relegated. Imagine. Right. Like no one, no one would do that. So, uh, I think it's, it's really cool to sort of see, um, this sort of pr the idea that the, these teams are going to be around for a long time in the the sense that, you know, as a fan, you can rally behind one of these teams and that they'll be there as well. And, and there's a, there's also a point to be made that, yes, we are, uh, I mean, many people would consider this a sport. I really don't care. This yeah. is a branch of the entertainment industry. We're sure. here to be entertained, right? That's what fans are watching here for. Like, you're, 
you know, you're watching to be entertained or maybe to learn stuff, right? Yeah. But the, the, the truth is that the core of this is we must entertain the people. And you can do that through different means. You can do it by having great games that people, you know, enjoy watching your games. You can do that by having great content. You can do that by doing some crazy social media, you know, you know what I mean? Like, and, and when relegation exists, you essentially simplify everything into winning. Right. And that's just so one dimensional. And what it, what it forces is, what it does is that it forces every team to invest less money on content creation and branding. Yeah. So in other words, invest less money on entertaining people and invest everything they have in player salaries, yeah. which is extremely unhealthy. Has the has the EU audience, I actually don't know, has the EU audience embraced the idea of uh, permanent? Because whenever this first got announced, I mean, like, the EU audience was like, but soccer? Um, you know, I, I so mean, is it, is, is it comparing, like, you just don't compare bananas with with a protein shake. Yeah, like, yes. you just don't do that. It's a very great, great quote. That's <laughs> why you're such a good businessman. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. Yeah, you just yeah. don't do that. Yeah. I mean... You know, the, the reason why esports uh, is in the place it is today is because we build it our way, you know, and this is, you know, the esports doesn't need to be like soccer or like, yeah. you know, like football or like uh, NBA, like anything. Esports is esports and sure. we play under our own rules. Why do we have to copy what other teams do? Like, why do, okay, there is a case to be made that adding a region into your name may also make people from that region uh, appealed to your team. You can yeah, look at, sure. um, you can look at, um, I mean, in, in any of the Overwatch team, right? Yep. London Spitfire. But I make the other case, which is why do you have to create artificial barriers, you know, to, to, to uh, your fan base? Yeah. This is a global phenomenon. So you, right? you're less interested in geo, like localizing? Or... I'm, I'm less interested in that just because of my philosophical belief that yeah. this is the next level of entertainment and not necessarily regional. I am a Spanish guy from Madrid, right? I've, I never left Madrid when I was 14 years of age. I never left Madrid. And my idol was Mohamed Spawn, which is a CSGO player, a Counter-Strike 1.5, 1.6 player, sure. was playing in SK Gaming. So a black Swedish player... Black Muslim Swedish player playing for a German organization in a Swedish team in a tournament played in Denmark. Sure. And this is the guy from Madrid just having that guy as an idol. Yeah. Like, what is more global than that? Nothing. On the other hand, but would you be saying that in a world where G2, God, God forbid, uh, was bottom of the pack for three years and was bleeding its fans, but, like the geolocalization uh, does a really good service for teams that have a hard time like maintaining their fan base you know like a g2 a tsm or whatever that can produce such consistent results over so many years they're going to be able to keep their fan base whereas if you are uh you know like there are in in at least in the us you, you tell me if this is different in europe there are a lot of really bad sports teams but they will have people that will still come out and buy tickets to watch them uh still watch their games on on television because of the fact that they like are rec their whole family has always right. been rooted for this because Again, of the fact that where they're this from. This is right. a old rules, like yeah. you know, because you're because this guy from Alabama uh, had a grandpa he played baseball with, sure, and then he has this this nostalgia effect towards that local team. Then he'll be watching the games for the next fifty years, but that's not this. You know, the, we're not in that world. Yeah, the world has changed, thankfully, yeah. and now you remain on top. Uh, by doing better than the rest. And if you don't do better than the rest, your company should actually die. Yeah, That's just the way it is. It's the hard truth. And you should lose all your fans. But, and as a result, you should but lose. But that sounds, that sounds like an argument in favor of relegation. If you don't do better no, than no, no, the no. rest. The, the reason that is not true is because those guys that are last are only focusing on not losing. Yeah. So it's survival mode as opposed to scaling, as opposed to... Uh, entertaining the people as opposed sure. to making an appealing brand everything is going to go to player salaries you know and even then even if you do what you think is a good job if everybody does that raises the level of the region you may end up out yeah which after some time after 10 15 years of that happening what will happen is that people from outside the investors which are like it or not those that finance the operations will say what is this sure. like why would i invest my money in such a a volatile asset it doesn't make any sense which so you you may not see the end today or tomorrow you will see it in some years when the investors 
uh, uh, see through the bullshit yeah. that is that investment and will never ever put their money ever, ever again. Let me ask you this actually, we because we did an interview for my channel before before we did the show, uh, and I didn't get a chance to ask you this. So in North America, uh, player salaries after franchising have maybe doubled or or perhaps even tripled somewhere around there. Even quadruple. Yeah, at it's, times. it's a uh, a lot of people making a lot more money than they did last year. Um, if you if you are G two. Is that not a bad thing for you? Because uh, you're all these, you know, let's say a bunch of uh, soccer clubs come in and they all start throwing a ton of money to get the top tier talent. Uh, are you worried at all of a world where sal player salaries balloon? Um, if player salaries balloon, um, this is so if you if you burn too much coal. Yeah, uh, you will undeniably increase the ratio in which global warming occurs. Yes. yes. Right. So, but we're still burning a lot of coal, Carlos. God damn it, Travis! I'm trying to make a point. No, here. but I mean, but, but, and I'm, I'm just, I agree, I agree. But I, so everything balances out in the sense of if player salaries balloon, yeah, teams will be forced to charge more to sponsors, yeah. uh, in order to finance that. Teams will be incentivized also and forced pretty much to increase the valuations in which they receive investments from. Yeah. So at the end of the day. When one thing balloons, everything balloons. Yes. And and then until it pops. Until it pops. Which is that, not a good thing. No, no, no. Yeah, but that's not happened in any sport that is growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at soccer today, you look at NBA, like salaries keep raising yeah. and raising and raising and raising and raising. It never stops. You're like, when is this going to stop? We're never going to stop because people are increasingly more and more looking to be entertained. As long as there is uh, a person willing to pay, um, you know, Two million a year to this League of Legends player. Sure, there will be another person willing to pay two point one tomorrow, yeah. and another person will pay two point three the day after. And the same way, those guys will be the ones forcing, you know, um, a, a PC manufacturer to pay five million a year. You know, yeah. and then but only if the then, PC manufacturer is not willing to, then you have to go and raise another round uh, for your yeah, company. Yeah, but if, if if they are not willing to, it's because they have another deal on the table. That is cheaper for them. Yeah. Right. Or, if, or they just don't want it. They're like, esports is too expensive. That's a concern that I have is in a world where esports gets too expensive for sponsors. Or, you know, like if you, what if, what if you can. Nothing. So, so this target audience never yeah. gets too expensive. To, oh. So 16 to 24, 16 to 28. Sure. Like that. Is, but there are other ways to hit 16 and 24 year olds. Uh, increasingly disappearing, I agree. And esports, I, I think, is like a great way to do it. But at a certain point in time, if you if it costs you two times as much to reach a customer, you know, there's you can only spend so much on marketing before you start losing. Uh, you know, you you can't spend infinite loads of money on on customers just because esports teams start charging you uh, more and more. Look, let, let me put it this way. Sure. When player salaries bubble up, it's not a byproduct of magic. It's a it's a byproduct of the hype around. That one team, uh, uh, that one industry. Sure. Which means that when there is hype around that one industry, that one industry capitalizes on that hype. Yeah. So there is no world in which salaries go up and revenues doesn't go up. Uh, don't go up. Maybe not fully hand in hand. Yeah. But almost hand in hand, and it requires some time for that to happen. Sure. Uh, some education time. In other words, there will be one or two years in which you're overpaying for your players while your sponsors. Are not understanding why they have to pay three x now. Yeah, uh, but that educational process happens, and they're forced to choose you. Why is that? Because League of Le there's only one League of Legends. There is only ten teams in that league, and those ten teams are paying similar sal salaries to their players, or there is a range, a very high sure. range of salaries. So that brand has to choose either I'm going to be in League of Legends or I'm not. Yeah. If they choose not to be, there will be competitors that will choose to be, and then they will be forced to join. So it's just, it's just it's the, it's the beauty and the beast of capitalism. Yeah. And it's, I don't consider it to be a bad... I, honestly, I have a saying that is for... An, is this a, the a, banana and peanut and the peanut protein shake saying? <laughs> no, no, it's not. But <laughs> different, different saying. Okay. Could very well be. Yeah. Which is that... Um, I, th I think you made me lose my train of thought, oh, sorry. Travis. Um, what Why has that it? effect on people? You <laughs> have a saying. What, what was saying? I, what was it that... For esports team, uh, I, I fucking lost my train of yeah. thought. 
Uh, you were talking about capitalism. Yeah. Uh, and the na- bel- the nature of the beast. The nature uh, of the beast. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You were going somewhere really great, and then I I derailed it. Production. You know where I was at it. No fucking idea. He's just he's laughing. Just, at he's you. just he's just looking at Fortnite he's videos. The motherfucker. Yeah. The fucking streaming Fortnite. Yeah. As we speak. It it it'll come to. Me. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember now. So what makes a successful esports team? Thank you, production, for nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Where's my fucking second coffee? Yeah. What makes an esports team? Where's my, what makes an esports team successful is the ability to uh, thrive in chaos. That was what I consider success for us. Sure. So there is an all like every day ongoing chaos everywhere. Yeah. Everything is just bubbling up. Everything is exploding, and you just have to be the maniac that understands those explosions and places them together in a way that benefits you. Yeah, I worry because I feel like most other healthy and mature ecosystems tend to run on a like stable platform. Like sales, for instance, sales loves you know these like standardized units, right? Like the uh, traditional sports and traditional television became really, uh, really successful whenever you had like a standardized 30 second ad that you could sell. And the internet became very successful whenever you had like a standardized banner unit. And then eventually you had like a standardized, like 30 second pre-roll ad. Uh, and you like the Olympics are sort of sold to sponsors on this, like, uh, two to four year schedule, depending on. So in a world where like you're, you're like, should we invest into this PUBG tournament? Uh, and you're like, great. It's six months from now. Let's invest into it. Three months in, PUBG like slides way back, and Fortnite is now the new hotness. Uh, I worry that it's such a, uh, to your point, it's such a chaotic system that mm-hmm. uh, a good esports team will navigate that. I just worry that that becomes increasingly difficult to monetize over the time. Now, I, know, I don't, I don't mean to be Mr. Negative here. I, I'm just very interested in the challenges that esports no, will you, have to this, face. This is all time. fair. This yeah. is all fair. Square. This, this is good. Um, I have a counter argument, which is that by this chaos being always present, all of a sudden you're placing, like if you look at, I'm going to give you the perfect analogy, I think. NFL, you own a hard spot, I mean, a hard, a hard uh, slot. I mean, yeah. a, hard, a hard asset, sorry. Yep. And then you can tank and no one will ever kick you. Sure. Right? Here... Owning a hard asset in the case of, you know, owning a, a permanent partnership in whatever game, right? It's just one of the many variables that may uh, judge your success. There are like eight games that are maybe irrelevant enough for you to be a part of. Yeah. And not all of them will have franchises or things of that nature uh, or permanent partnerships. So all of a sudden, the shift of what's important to have when investing in a company is not just who owns that one asset, even if it's a, not that great of a management team. Yeah. If they own that asset, then, well, they are valuable, right? All of a sudden, it becomes a bit more complex. It's not only that asset or that combination of assets, but also the quality of the management team, the quality of the, or their, their ability to innovate constantly. You look at, through the history, uh, through history, you look at um, a lot of technology companies have died because they have not innovated enough, because they felt that they were in a position of power and then they eventually died when they were no longer unique. Sure. And what for, what this industry and this chaos forces is forces you to innovate all the time. It's an ever-growing, super open market that, in, and that will never change, by the way. Yeah. Like, you will always have developers out there just breaking their necks to create the next big game. And... And, and, and us teams will always be the common denominator in all these variables. So, Well, and esports organizations hate it uh, whenever anybody compares them to an agency. But in a sense, it is very similar to a marketing it agency. Is very, it where, is super similar. Yeah, where a marketing agency, like there's a lot of chaos in the marketing world. Well, you know, how are you going to find brands? Certain brands rise, certain brands fall, certain mediums rise. You need to create all these different uh, campaigns and all that stuff. But uh, a valuable marketing agency is somebody I think that can sort of tackle this and figure out like what are the specific goals for a brand and all that so and not only that like if you look at you know the likes of WME IMG CAA like yeah. the biggest agencies in the world uh, talent agencies in the world they are 
I mean, their brand is big just because they're there for many years and like Hollywood is big and you name it, right? But, yeah. you know, no one buys like WME merchandise and yeah. no one cares. Right. But the beauty of this is that this brand every day has more and more value. Every day that passes, G2, Fnatic, Team Liquid, yada, yada, have one more fan, one more fan, one more sure. fan, one more fan, one more fan. And there's a point of no return here. Yeah. Like there's a point in which teams have so many fans uh, that they can essentially, um, I mean, they will have a lot of impact in the industry. How do you feel about leagues that force you to rebrand? So if you enter it's not, it's Overwatch just, it's right fantastic. now. I, I think it's a good thing. But, uh, but you're, you're, okay, so in your world, building G2, like the brand grows, it's awesome, it's awesome, it's awesome. If you create a brand in Overwatch League, and it grows, it grows, it grows, it's awesome. And then Overwatch League dies. That All that work that you've done building that brand is kind of goes away. Um, but, but, and so that's like, I'm just curious because you brought that up, uh, sort of like the building. I mean, the as long as the brand is directly tied to that game, no yeah. matter what, then you will be right. But um, I'm pretty sure there are mechanisms in place. To, to allow you to take the brand in a world that the league exactly, goes Exactly, because yeah. otherwise it's like investing in... Imagine investing in Instagram and then Instagram dies. And yeah. you, all that money that went there, you just lose it, lose it all one yeah. day. It's it's tough. I don't think that's I don't think that's a thing. And and I sure you know I it would be hard to sign such terms. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I've been asking you questions. I'm just curious. No, but this, uh, man, it's, this, it's your honest, show. It's your show. Come on, man. This is great. I I absolutely love this. This yeah. is a back and forth. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm loving this conversation because you know it, it's hard to find people in esports that actually put a lot of thought into these things. Yeah. And I agree. There's a lot of not thoughtful people in esports. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could all, cur- even production's getting a kick out of that. Yeah. It's true. I mean, right. you have a lot of uh, consultants, esports consultants. Oh, yes. That, um, I mean, you know, every now and then I will go to these uh, esports uh, conferences. Conferences? Yeah, we've all been to those. Oof. Uh, that, sometimes, funny. like, my ear drums are just fucking imploding. Well, what's very funny is you consistently find panels where you're like, that person's good, that person's good, the third person, what have they ever yeah, done? Yeah, exactly. Like, who's the, who's yeah. that guy? Yeah. And, 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 and then those people will pop up all the time at these conferences, and you start to realize, like, oh, they're just, that's their whole life is just going to these conferences. Yeah, exactly. I am, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I used to be to more, I, I used to go to more of those. Mm-hmm. But then after I realized that I was speaking with people I, I, I you know, yeah. I know already, I, I, I stopped going to those. And now I go to the ones that I don't know anyone, right? Yeah. Um, I'm there are some sure. good ones. I like the Invin, Invin did one at uh, UC Irvine recently, the Invin Global Conference that was a little more legitimate. The, I mean, okay. also the problem is you have to find, the like the whole value in going and speaking to those, generally speaking, is to find brands that want to work with you. And exactly. Other There's always like a, so an you agenda. have to find like the companies that, or find the conferences that actually have people there that are interested in working with you. Absolutely. So, you know, why don't we get a little bit personal here? Sure. I always, um, I, 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 you know, I, I was in the, in the gym the other day and I was listening to this podcast and he, he, asked a question that I found super interesting. Just tell us a story about a defining moment in your life that made you who you are today. Hmm. It is such a deep question uh, that I, I I personally love it. Yeah, I love the question too. Uh, I'm trying to think of what uh, what a good example of it would be for me. Um, It's tough, but yeah. If you find that one, we'll give everybody context yes. of why you do things. Like, is there anything you know? I don't know where. Where, where were you born? I was born in Southern California, in San Diego. And does that have, have, does that have anything to do with what you ended up doing in your life? Yeah, I will, here's a here's a good example of of one. Um, it's a very random one, but uh, gr- so uh, brief context here. My growing up, uh, my parents had divorced when I was five. And so I would go and visit my father on the weekends. Um, and he and I have a great relationship now. I uh, uh, love him very much. But uh, it was always a source of contention because as I increasingly got older, it was hard to um, it was difficult because I started getting a lot of friends and I had a high school girlfriend and all this stuff. And and just going away every weekend was so frustrating um, and at the end of my freshman year of high school, 
uh, the very last day, in fact, I was moving away from this high school to, to go a little bit further away. That was so sad. Uh, my father came and picked me up and he picked me up earlier than he was planning on. Um, and as we were driving down the road, uh, he told me, um, he was angry at me cause I took my time to get to the car. This is a very random story. Sorry. There's nothing and, I love it. Love uh, it. <laughs> and he told me, we pulled over to get gas or something and he told me that is really close to just, he's like, had if you hadn't come to the car anytime sooner, I would have just driven off and said goodbye. And I said, well, had I known that, I would have just not come to the car because I wanted to spend this last day with my family or my friends, and you, you came to pick me up early. This was uh, around this time probably so many years ago. Um, and I said, so I'm just, I'm not going to get back in the car. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend this weekend with my friends because uh, I really hate that you're doing this to me. Um, and it was an interesting moment because it was like he was like getting the car. And it was this kind of, I think, for a lot of uh, men and probably for women as well. But there's always that moment where you kind of have that face off with your parents around like, no, I'm going to do this thing and you can't stop me from doing it. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of repercussions that occur whenever those moments occur. But uh, I think that was a, a big moment for me um, and and one where I started to kind of realize, you know, only, only in ninth grade, but that... I had the ability to kind of control my destiny in these moments and that, uh, that, is, that I, is actually a great story. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear so many people that are still in college, uh, or people even out of college that say, I say, why don't you do this? Or why, why don't you, they're like, Oh, well, I really love this thing, but I can't really do it because my parents don't want me to, or I would love to get into esports, but my parents, it's just, they would never believe in this or whatever. And, uh, you know, maybe part of the reason I, I related so much to Peter's story uh, way, way back whenever he, and he ended up living with me is because I, I really think uh, it is important for individuals to carve their own destiny and uh, to decide on what they want out of life um, and, and to not let their parents or, or significant others or whoever else really dictate to them the terms in which they live their own life. Um, and so for me, I think I, I, I will again, love my dad on great terms with him now. Uh, but I think probably a lot of that turn became whenever I, I became an adult and he stopped trying to sort of tell me where I needed to go. And he's not, he's gone to an esports event with me before. He still doesn't really understand it, but he's very happy with where I am now. And, uh, I don't know. I, I always encourage people to, uh, sort of figure out what they want to do rather than what their parents want them to do. Fuck, that's deep, man. Yeah. It's deep. It's a good story. It's yeah. a really good well, story. You, you asked the question, yeah. I know. I'm telling you, this question is getting the best out of people. It's, yeah. um, it's unbelievable. Sure. So why um, journalism? I mean, why this type of journalism? Yeah. By, by the way, this is like, it's a very special type of journalism. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a very, um, it's mostly very positive. It's mostly, it's, yeah, it's, I've tried to, it's funny in the, especially after leaving Yahoo, I've really sort of dropped calling myself as a journalist okay. um, because the kind of frustrating thing for me over time has been that, especially in the esports space, I don't know, with the conversation around like fake news and all this stuff, there's like, like the word journalist is weaponized so that's much. That's true. That's very true. It's like, I never, I never was like, oh, sometimes people would say, oh, you're my favorite journalist or whatever. But most of the time it's like. Oh, I would expect something different from a journalist or Travis, you did a funny interview. That's not what a real journalist would do. Mm. Uh, and so I, you know, at, at the end of the day, like I, I, there are a lot of people and props to them. I have, I have a ton of respect for journalism uh, and the people out there that do uh, that, that grind and, and want to do everything they can. And I certainly want to act in an ethical, incredible way. Uh, and try to to do that and, and act as transparent and conflict of interest and everything. But for me, like I, it's not about being a journalist. It's about making great content, telling great stories, like illuminating who these players are, uh, having conversations and dialogues around uh, what is happening in the league and the industry. Being on shows like this, having my own shows like this, like I, I who cares about the term journalist? Uh, like a, a lot of people do, but for I me, like, like I just want to do awesome videos and tell great stories and start interesting conversations. And if somebody wants to call me a journalist, that's fine. If that's they awesome. don't, that's fine. You know? Um, so that's, that's kind of my whole spiel right now, but to, to answer your, your question more promptly, which was, uh, you know, why do this? I don't know. I, uh, it's funny. I, I was talking to some friends last night 
about one of my favorite movies. Uh, my two favorite movies are Lost in Translation. The other one is Thank You for Smoking. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. For two, those, two nice choices, actually. Yeah, yeah. Thank You for Smoking. Uh, they, he opens the, sh- the main character opens the movie by talking about how he talks for a living. Uh, he's a, a lobbyist for the smoking and tobacco industry. Um, and, and as I entered college, I actually wanted to be a lobbyist, uh, in part because of that movie. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I like the, the idea of like a good example is I wanted to work in games whenever I was in college and I didn't know what I could do. This was before I understood the fact that there's a, a producer, like a video game producer who can like unite everything. But I was like, I, I can't, uh, write music. I can't, I can't do art. I can't program stuff. I'm, I'm not great at designing a game. Um, and, and what, what, what can I do to participate in this stuff? Um, and for me, I realized at awkward sometimes and and awkward and not awkward in other situations, uh, you know, one of my skills is that I can talk to people. Um, and so figuring out how I can add value, do cool stuff in the games industry by talking to people, that was, uh, something I wanted to pursue, um, and, and something I realized I could do. And as, as I started a podcast, I, charm. yeah, well, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, people are willing to talk to me about stuff. So as I started a podcast that uh, was supposed to be just a thing to stick on a resume uh, and eventually became its own uh, show, which you were on on many of the episodes of State <laughs> of the League back in the day. Um, and then that became interviewing and uh, uh, other editorial pieces. You know, I, I just started to realize, like, this is something I, I can do. And I love there are so many like I've I've loved helping pro players tell their stories. Some of my favorite moments uh are when uh, a player who I've known is such a nice guy or has such a great story or or whatever, you know, I, I've done five or six or seven interviews with them, but that eighth interview goes to number one on the subreddit and everybody goes like, oh, I'm officially a fan of this player. You know, like that's such a rewarding moment for me because I, I really love creating fandom and uh, so, so, uh, so stuff in the space. Truthfully, of course, you, you like to make people feel great. Yeah. Um, but truthfully, what, what, what drives you? Like if you had to, um, you know, you, you get paid... No one gets paid anything. You just do. You imagine sure. you get to do what you choose. Like, yeah. why? I mean, would you choose this first of all, and yeah. second, why would you choose this? Yeah, I think I probably would. Uh, after Yahoo shut down, I had a lot of um, options that perhaps would have had certainly more guaranteed income uh, rather than being independent, um, and and potentially much more. Uh, but I, I like this for a couple different reasons. One is there's not that many people that are doing this. Um, and there's a lot of great people that can run teams like yourself and, and uh, organizations. There's a lot of other people that can run leagues. But for me, uh, I, I've identified this as, as an area where I can do a, a lot of really cool stuff and have a really big impact, right? Um, I love the idea that I can start a conversation about something that's happening in the industry and see a change within a couple of weeks in, in a world where I create a convincing argument. Um, and I love the idea where I can do... Uh, an amazing interview with a player and and they end up having a ton of fans, you know? So one, I, I love the fact that this is like a high impact job. I think it's a high impact job. And I think that at times I can have a really high impact in the Le- League of Legends space and, and sometimes more broadly in, in esports as a whole. Um, and I, I think that it's something that uh, I, I'll admit the, the part of it is I could never, there are a lot of great people who can work behind the scenes and they never need the pat on the back. They never like an accountant who just like rocks that spreadsheet and like they know that they've saved the company millions of dollars. Uh, but no one ever says like, good job. You know, for me, uh, there is a, a feedback loop that I really appreciate. You know, I love the fact that I can a great example at Worlds last year, uh, ESPN leaked that Immortals is not going to be making it into NALCS. Mm-hmm. And I'd heard rumors of this for a little while. And I felt like the article was reported uh, fairly neutrally, but without very much uh, you know, thoughts or analysis as to why that might be. It was about uh, maybe 2 a.m. in Guangzhou. And I just turned on my computer and t- uh, turned on my webcam and gave like a maybe a 15 or 20 minute thought process on like why Wait, I thought I, I, I was just going to have this. I, I watched that. Yeah, yeah. I and, watched that. And it was great because the entire subreddit was like, why? Why would Riot ever do this? Riot's lost their mind, blah, blah, blah. And, and we can debate whether or not they should have done it, but there are reasons why it might have been a good idea. And that was the only thing I want to do with this video was say, like, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but you guys are not considering yeah, any exactly. of these reasons. There's a, there was a... And it went to number one on the subreddit and, like, it stopped, like, the conversation and created... Or it stopped, like, the pitchforks and created a conversation. 
Um, and so for me, like the effect that like a spur of the moment, 2 a.m. Guangzhou, I can just turn on my webcam and start talking about something and have that big of an impact on on a, a pretty big conversation in the space, I think is uh, it feels really good to me. So I, I really like it. All right, I respect that. So if you would have to pick like, um, you know, a, a one or a few things that you'd like to see 15 years from now, 20 years from yeah. now, like, you know, moonshots, right? Yeah. What would you see yourself for me, yeah, like I mean, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I, I will be uh, uh, interviewed in the Tonight Show. Oh yeah, in uh, fifteen years from now. Yeah, I. It's an interesting question. I've spent a lot of the past six months uh, in reflection of what I want to accomplish. Um, it wasn't until uh, November or December of last year that I decided that I wasn't going to, at least for a year or so, uh, take a full time job somewhere and instead work on doing stuff independently. And so, excuse me, it's, so it's been, it's been a time for me to kind of think, you know, uh, previously maybe I wanted to run a, a big media company. Uh, other times I wanted to do whatever. I think for me, I've been very inspired in the past couple of months by some of the big YouTubers uh, that are out there. I used to think of YouTuber and I just sort of thought of somebody who just like sits in front of their webcam and rants and does a bunch of jump cuts and they're just talking about whatever it is. It's, it wasn't something where I thought you could really... Uh, create like beautiful videos and and have a, a real impact. And then I I start stumbled on Casey Neistat, who's a, a really big YouTuber, um, and sort of saw the impact that he can have on his community. Um, and so for me, there's a, a kind of an exploration that's going on in the past couple months of what uh you know unique types of content can I put out there that makes people think. And it's not always about esports. Like I did a whole video that was just about the art of interviewing and how I thought mm -hmm. everyone should know how to do an interview because uh, it makes you a good conversationalist. You'll have better relationships with friends and family and significant others. So I think um, sort of diving into that type of content and figuring out, you know, uh, now that I have not many, but at least a few uh, life lessons underneath my belt, um, you know, how can I, I convey that to a lot of people who are maybe interested in that stuff? Or how can I uh, create content with, as I've done in the past, telling stories of other people who've had interesting moments in their lives. So uh, I think, you know, right now, and I, this changes all the time, but maybe, you know, 10 years from now or so, it'd be nice to have like a, a really big channel, a really big platform where I feel like I can influence a lot of, of people in a positive way. All right. That's fair enough. Are you materialistic? Uh, I will say that I've gotten comfortable. Uh, you know, ex I think everybody goes through the same thing. You exit college and you say, well, not everybody, but a lot of people exit college and they say, I don't need anything. You know, I just want to have a good time. I, I don't need to be a millionaire. I, I know a lot of people, uh, Reginald loves the idea, I think, of, of becoming a very, very wealthy person uh, over in North America. But for me, uh, living comfortably is nice. I've enjoyed that when I get to tra travel, is, once you start traveling, you never want to stop traveling, I think. I love yeah. being able to, to visit places and uh, try good food and uh, go to, uh, you know, have good experiences all over the world. So I think that's stuff that's nice for me, but I don't, I don't need to start my own company and sell it to you know CNN for a bajillion dollars or whatever. So you don't want a, a Lamborghini? Uh, I I I've been in a Lamborghini before. I worry that I would kill myself uh, accidentally in a, in a Lamborghini. <laughs> they are. I mean, I. It's funny you say Lamborghini. I I am not a very extreme person. I don't like roller coasters. I'd never jump out of a plane. But uh, driving cars is a very very fun experience. It'd be fun to drive a Lamborghini. Sometime. You know, I, I it's, it's my. Is my hidden hobby, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I I love I love driving on yeah. my free time. You have a, a Ventador uh, parked in. I'm uh... not gonna speak about my possessions. Okay, okay. Park, but I, I I like I like cars a lot. Yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's my it's my hidden pleasure. Yeah. My guilty pleasure. Yeah. I I mean I can I can relate to that. I think uh, I don't know. Someday it would be nice to have a very very fancy sports car. Very nice. Well, there you go. So you know, it's 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 not a bad thing to be materialistic. Like yeah. you know. It, yeah, well, you, you, but you I don't are, need much. Like for instance, a lot so, of people want to buy a house. I don't. I don't need to buy a house. I'm happy to. Oh, to, that, that's you know. a good point. You know, yeah. with with buying homes, I would I would buy it as an investment. I wouldn't buy it as a place to live. Actually, yeah. Um, uh, I, I I really wouldn't I, because I think that once you lock yourself down somewhere, I think you lose that spark. You know? Yeah. It can, and I feel it's good to be like moving, always moving, always evolving. You know. Yeah. There is there is a saying. <laughs> It's nothing about a protein sure. shake and a banana. Yeah. But there's a saying 
the person uh, required for your next move is uh, supposed to be better than the person that you are today. So sure. every time you move to uh, a different country or a city, um, you're forced to learn new things yeah. by default. So you become a better person by default, right? Uh, same time as when you stop living with your parents, you have all of a sudden have to learn about insurances yeah. and all about you know how to pay rent and things yeah, like that, right? Of course, is a uh, evolution. Yeah. Exactly. So the same way, you know, in a company when they scale to a different market, like they just it just forces them to be good at working remotely and between yeah. time zones and things like that, right? So the same thing here. I feel like if I lock myself down in a place, it's gonna be a bad thing. Yeah. Well, where's your next move then, Carlos? Uh, probably the U.S. Yeah. Probably somewhere in the U.S. Los Angeles? Could be. Yeah, it's a good place. Could be. I, I, I like sun. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. We've got sun. You know, I, I'm I'm happy right now. I'm, yeah. I'm you know, as I told you, there's some sun outside during the morning. Yeah. It's like the three months in Berlin where... Yeah, yeah. You said happy leave. right now, but three months from now. You said and nine, then, nine and then, months is not good. Yeah. And then you just like... I'm like, you know, I, I take a bunch of vitamins every morning. Yeah. Uh, and one of them is and vitamin D. they really D. help you feel good. I mean, they uh, they help me not uh, feel bad, yeah, yeah. you know, because I do lack vitamin D. Yeah. When, when like it's just so bad that I like vitamin D. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and and maybe it's just placebo. Who knows? But yeah. don't tell me, okay? Yeah, I won't. Just tell me that it works. Just tell yeah. me that you're a doctor and it works. Yeah. And don't worry, Carlos. Keep doing that. Yeah. It works. Uh, Bananas and protein shakes. Yes. Exactly. I yeah. need sun, man. I just, I'm Spanish, man. I need fucking yes. sun. Yeah. And 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 one would be well, it's counterintuitive. You were a scarf. And it's, 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 I mean, don't get me wrong, people, it's hot here, okay? Yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not about that. It's yeah. about me knowing that there is sun outside, you know? And even being in the office, I don't care. It's yeah. just knowing there is sun outside makes me happier. That is one of the downsides from when, so when I, I worked at Yahoo, I would every day drive back on the freeway and see the sunset. And uh, working from my apartment, which is where uh, I'm at right now, um, it's a, uh, you don't have an incentive to leave necessarily. And so I sometimes I go out and see a sunset. I'm like, I haven't seen a sunset in like a week. You know? Man, it's, you know, I, I remember times in which during the winter, there's like, I don't know how much is that in Fahrenheit, but like imagine like 30 degrees, 35. Sure. That's 30, pretty cold, right? Uh, oh, in Fahrenheit, yes. 32 is freezing. Right. So like imagine 35, something yeah. like oh, cold, right? Yes. And it would be like, just no like classic day at least in spain it's a classic day not here yeah but where there's no clouds sure there's sun but it's just super cold i will just go outside and open my arms like a fucking flower doing photosynthesis you know yeah. like i <laughs> i will utilize that you know those minutes of sun yeah because i need it i feel like i need it that's that must be something something to do with, with spanish people man yeah perhaps it's, it's it's you know during the winter i know that there is sun behind the clouds because I read it on the books. I, yeah. I, I read it on the books that there's supposed to be a sun after the clouds. Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't fucking know. Yeah. Yes, I live in Germany. It is yeah. what it is. That's the, that's the downside. Yeah. I can tell you love it. You're still you're in LA right now, right? What's that? You're in LA, right? Yes. I, w I probably will be. You, you said that whole speech about traveling and moving. I think that's really great. I don't know if I'll ever leave Southern California. Okay. I love Southern California so much. I, I love traveling. I mean, you have that vibe, actually, as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just... Your thing. I honestly do think, uh, and I can say quite confidently, it's the best place in the world to live. All right. Yeah. Well, ha have you lived in Spain? Uh, I have not. Well, actually, I, ha I have a... There's a caveat here. So, Spain is probably the best place on earth to live. Okay. If you're already rich. Yes. And that's, because if you want to make that's money... Thing. So, like, I think holistically, Southern California just offers so many opportunities. Like... The weather's amazing. The food is amazing. The job opportunities are amazing. The things you can become there, the things you can do, uh, it's just like the it, the quality of life is great. There's so many great things about Southern California. I'm just a, a huge fan. For sure, I agree with you. There's no other place on earth where you have that weather and that level of potential yeah. business opportunities. Yeah. There's nowhere, nowhere else. Yeah. Um, oh, great. You know, we may, we may see each other there at some yeah, point. That'd be good. How do you like to um, de-stress? Like, do you know, do you read books or do you play games? What do you yeah, uh, a couple different things. Um, I am a huge consumption, or I, I consume audiobooks like crazy. Oh, wait, uh, which one was, uh, you know, a few of the last books you remember that you liked? Yeah, so a lot of people uh, consume audiobooks and they listen to self-improvement books or business mm -hmm. books or whatever. I listen I do that. to fantasy novels. Uh, so, oh, you know, I have. Wait, I have I to cut you there. Yeah, we talked In the about name this, right? of the wind, yes, I started. We talked about this. Yes, I, we talked about this. I thought I told you. Haven't you tweeted about this before? Yeah, and you were the one that told me. 
Yes. No way, man. That, shit, that book is Chronicles fucking long. Is amazing, yes. Well, it's, it's your the, fault then. Yes. I can fucking finish it. Yes, it's really good. Yes. Uh, you're on the first book, right? Yes, and yeah. it's like... It's already like 20 books. Yeah. Once when you, is that finishing? There's only there's only two books so far. There's a third that who knows when will come out. But uh, this is like the esports book. Like you can talk to Waylon. You can talk to Mark Z. You can talk really? to Hi. You can like all these. Everybody reads Name of the Wind. It's like the uh, Scar. It's like the gateway gateway drug to fantasy. Okay. What about uh, Brendan Sanderson? Yeah. So then you move. That's what is what that? I was going to say. So you move from after you're done with Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, yeah. When I'm 83 sad. years of age. So after you're done with the first two books and you're depressed that the third is never going to come out. Uh, you move on to Brandon Sanderson. Uh, Mistborn okay. is like the uh, entry drug, I think, for Brandon Sanderson. It's kind of like the entry. The you production, get in with production that. is an, as nerdy as you. Yeah, you get in with those first uh, three books. And then uh, once you've done enough uh, Brandon Sanderson, uh, you can move on to his uh, magnum opus. Uh, the most recent one is uh, called Oathbra- uh, Oathbringer. Um, okay. But he... He is, uh, he's working on this like really big, long series, and there's okay. three of them out right now uh, that are quite good. So The, the good thing is that uh, by then, I'll probably be 153 years of age. And and the good thing is that probably the series the, the series are done already. Yes. Like the guy had probably wrote, written yes. the whole I thing. I worry that they might not finish in time because it's not your age that's the concern. It's the concern of these authors, but uh, or the age of these authors, but we'll see. Uh, like but when that's, the, when their metacarpians stop uh, working... working yes. That would be a problem. Well, hopefully they can dictate by then. Uh, dictation technology is getting pretty good, but <laughs> That's a good um, but <laughs> but I yeah I'm a huge huge uh, fantasy uh, novel person. Love listening to the audiobooks. So that, actually, a big problem that I'm running through is um, I'm like read uh, and consumed almost all of the really good ones. Uh, so now I'm like sort of scraping at the barrel and then hoping for the next ones to come out. Mm, that's a problem, right? Yeah. When, it's like when you play like a very good game or you watch a very good movie, then you yeah. feel like after that, your life is over. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. that's going to gonna yes. top that. Yeah. What do you think are my, like just know me how you know me, okay? Yeah. Know me how you know me. Sure. Where do you think are my top three movies? Oh boy. I, I, I think uh, you're going to get right at least one uh, or yeah. two. I don't know if I, if I will or not. Uh, you always have struck you. You strike me as somewhat of a, a Wolf of Wall Street type. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's like one. A, okay, that's, that's one. one that's, one, that's one of them. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I can get the other two. Uh, I think you can. Yes, just you know. I have no idea. Uh, oh, actually, well, it's, it's okay. You, it's, it's, it's top three movies and or shows. Right, and or shows. I mean, uh, I everybody loves Game of Thrones. Okay, well, it's not okay, that. but it's not okay. Um. I don't know. You should tell me. I, I okay, feel that, like that, I got the one right. I just yeah, yeah. You, you won already. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I already know yours actually. Yeah. So maybe I'm I glancing at Twitch chat. Somebody uh, says Kung Fu Panda. Is that <laughs> Kung Fu Panda? One of them? Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's Wolf of Wall Street, like yeah. undeniably. Then there is a Gladiator. And okay. Then there is Spartacus, the sh- the show. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's like it's like. Yeah, that I mean, I would not have guessed those two, but they mo- they both make sense. And uh, I was—it's cohesive. I have a yeah, cohesive yeah. story, right? Yes, yes. I have a cohesive a badass story. male character. Exactly. I, I always yeah. relate to that guy, like yeah. you know, a bathed guy, super yeah. charismatic. He gets all the chicks and all that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm I'm married. I have a kid. I don't bang all the chicks. Sure. My, my lady is the lady. I remember the early days of League of Legends. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! We can move on. My lady's watching. Can we cut that? Yeah, yeah. Just... <laughs> Don't worry, um, we're gonna cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, Spartacus, man. I, I actually every time. I mean, with with Spartacus as a show, it happened to me what you just described. Mm. Like then I watched Game of Thrones and I was like, Meh. yeah. I don't know, man. Like Spartacus, man. Like yeah. I you know I never cry, right? You know yeah. that, right? I never cry. I never yes. do cry. Yeah. Never ever. Yeah. Um, and and I, I did cry in the in the last Spartacus uh, yeah. um, episode. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. Believe it or not. I never cry. I believe it. You're a very emotional guy. And unemotional. Yeah. I'm pragmatic. Yeah. No emotions. No emotions whatsoever. Never cry. Yeah. Not a single time. Yeah. I My son it. got born. No cry. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. there just laughing. Yeah. No emotions. I feel like you did an interview with me where you said you were crying when your son was born. Why do you have to bring? There's like a, what do you what do you get so a video technical documentation? Yeah. You, you have to get so technical in a live stream. Yes, we yeah. can't clip this shit. We can't edit. Yeah, that's why I agreed to do it because I yeah, knew that it. you wouldn't you wouldn't be yeah, able to yeah, take yeah. this down. Yeah. No. Yeah. People bring up the back door. That was that wasn't really crying. Yeah. Like I I actually like it's allergies. 
No, it's not. I just put my finger inside my. Have you ever put your finger, placed your finger in your eyeball? No, that seems like an unhealthy decision. Well, there you go. Well, that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No judgment. Um. So I'm gonna guess the shows you like the most. Okay. I already told you my favorite movies. Yeah, so. that's why I said shows, yeah. right? So I'm gonna say, um, Suits. Uh, I've not seen Suits. All right, I I give up. Okay. <laughs> uh, that was we spent a lot of time on that. Uh, I really, uh, for a while I was liking House of Cards. I don't like it as much recently. Um, uh, I really like Newsroom. Have you seen Newsroom? It's no. It's a very good show. No. Uh, Aaron Sorkin. Uh, Bojack Horseman is amazing. Okay. It's a Netflix show. Uh, Fun. You seem to have a lot of free time. What is the, what are all this, what, what are these shows? Bojack names? Horseman is very popular. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's critically acclaimed. Okay. It's like a very thoughtful, uh, cartoon. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I, I really enjoy. Uh, I'm trying, like, I really do like Game of Thrones, although, um, with, I don't know, it seems to be kind of going wonky at the end here. Uh, what about Hannibal? Hannibal, I've not seen Hannibal. I haven't been watching as much. I've been uh, tearing through, this is like a, a guilty pleasure because I don't think it's a very amazing show, but I've been going through Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. recently because okay. I've been enjoying all the Marvel movies. So, uh, Hey, man, I have to be honest. Yeah. What Marvel did fucking amazing yeah. like well they were on the verge of bankruptcy them incredible. much like apple are incredible because stories where they they were on the verge of bankruptcy and then were able to turn themselves into like huge mega cor uh, companies that uh, man like yeah. my idol is um is um how was the oh, how can i forget my idol iron man? yeah not iron man they think the dude fucking tony stark oh yeah my idol is tony stark yeah it's a, it's a fictional character yes. that's my fucking idol well, it's, a problem. it's hard not. I mean, I like I never growing up. I was always a big fan of Batman because Batman did not have like some sort of superpower. He just was like smart. His superpower was he was rich, I guess. Uh, but uh, similarly, like I enjoy Iron Man because he's just a very smart, uh, smart dude. That he's very witty happen. and yeah, yeah. You know, actually, when when we are speaking about the YouTube brand, you're talking rich, rich here. What again? Rich, rich. What? Rich. R Richie Rich? You don't know the cartoon? Richie Rich. Richie Rich? Yes. No. It's a, it's a cartoon, uh, and then they did like a live action movie. It's just a very rich kid. Okay. It's what? fun. You can, we could move on. H how many shows do you fucking watch? Because this Well, is... that's where I'm like forever. That's like saying like the Peanuts. You know the Peanuts? Uh, I know. Yeah. Uh, Charles Short, whatever. Charlie Brown? Oh, uh, Charlie Brown, yeah. Yes. Okay. That okay. is from, that's the okay. Peanuts. Yeah. Okay. Understood. All right. Well, so talking about Marvel, okay. what he did was fucking glorious. Like it was amazing. Uh, just a dead franchise. Yeah. And they revived it. Like I'm even like looking forward to see fucking Ant Man. Like, yeah. I, I mean, maybe not, but maybe the guy ends up like being the real deal. You know. Yeah. And and that's in, that's incredible. Like yeah. they just can bring like you know this guy from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, the guy that is. Uh, have you you watched the last one, right? Yeah. yeah. So why why Gamora? Oh yeah, yeah, that of guy. Course. Yeah, that is hilarious. Yeah, I think Chris Batista is his name, I believe. I don't know. Yeah, you don't you know the name of the guy? Drax well? is the character. Okay, uh, and I think the actor is, is that Chris guy. Batista. I mean, I was like crying from laughter. Yeah, so funny, man. It's just like I even like relate. I mean, he's, I love that guy. Yeah. I just love that guy. And Thor, like you know, one of the things I've enjoyed, I. So for a while, I was starting to get worried that a lot of them... Don't worry. Movies, I'm, well, I'm not going to... There's yeah, no, spoilers, spoilers, no spoilers. Don't worry. Why Gamora? I mean, this is yeah. something that he says. Like, it yeah. doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, for a while, was worried that a lot of the Marvel movies were getting too samey. Like, they felt like a little too formulaic. Um, and then Guardians of the Galaxy came out. That was really good. Thor Ragnarok feels like a very unique movie. Um, I the most recent Avengers obviously is, is really well done, so it's it's been incredible to see them sort of evolve the brand. It's been good. Yeah, it's it's incredible, and yeah, I I think Ragnarok was one of the best movies I've, I've watched. Yeah, that's really well done. Like the way they shaped, I don't know. I yeah. haven't watched actually Black Panther. Yeah, they got Black Panther really is good. very good as well. I think they've done a good job of taking what makes the Marvel movies good, and then taking like a certain aesthetic and applying that. You know, like the, the Thor Ragnarok has that like. 80s Valhalla kind of feel to it, uh, which is, is really good. It, it creates like a such a good experience as you're seeing all these like different elements come together. Um, and I think Black Panther had that. They had like a, a Afro tech is what they called that sort of the visual look that they were able to embrace okay. for like Wakanda. Afro -tech. Yeah. Uh, and so they've, they've done a lot of really cool, uh, 
unique things recently, I think, to make sure that each of their their movies feels unique and, and cohesive. And then you compare that to the DC universe, which is a little bit, I mean, after... Yeah, they what? can't get it together. All right, Wonder Woman was great, uh, but Gal Gadot oh, was that. like my was okay, celebrity yeah. crush, so I think that might have something to do with it. Batman, man, that was great movies, actually. Yeah. Really Way great back movies. In the day, yeah. Although I don't think they've aged well. If you go back and look at any of the other the old Batman movies, they're not even like. Oh, the older no, no, no. I'm talking about Christian Bale. Yeah, even the Christian Bale ones. You should you should go back and watch uh, nah, Dark Knight. Come on, it's it was amazing. You should you should see it. Uh, it really? doesn't like uh, uh, Heath Ledger well, is still that? amazing. Heath Ledger is still amazing in it, but I think that the it just it feels not as good. It's very corny really? in certain ways. Yeah. It, it feels it felt amazing at the time, but then I saw it recently. That, that means that something changed in our perception. Why is that? What what changed? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, so like one of the things I've I've learned recently is if you go and you watch Citizen Kane, you're like, this movie is pretty mediocre. Why does everybody think it's amazing? It's because Citizen Kane apparently revolutionized the way movies were made, it's and then every point. other movie after that took from Citizen Kane. So. You've you've seen every Citizen Kane does a bunch of stuff that's revolutionary at the time, but like is standard now, and so there's nothing it, to get it, hype that's about. That's a good point, actually. I watched yeah. recently uh, one of the Hunger Games movies, and I felt that way actually yeah. because when when they came out, I was like biggest fanboy. Yeah. And I also love Jennifer Lawrence. She's she's I mean she's great. Yeah. Uh, but it it's true that uh, you could be right. You yeah. Could be right. They, you know they they you know it, context changes. Yeah. And now with the kind of level of Marvel movies, like every three weeks, there's some new movie from Marvel appearing. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. That's hard to match. Yeah. I, they must. I'm like Soon they'll have the Monopoly. Yes. Um, who, who, who is it? it? It's Disney, of course. Disney yeah. will just own the world. <laughs> yes. They, they're getting very aggressive in all their acquisitions. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I wonder when is that, uh, or if that's going to stop. Is, is there any ongoing like lawsuit or something like that? It uh, not that I know of. It, it's weird because... Um, what I think they are buying is a lot of intellectual property. And I don't know, I'm in no way a, a savvy person, but you know, no, more normally lawsuits and that kind of thing happen when there's like an anti-consumer thing happening. Right. Like, Oh, we own all like of telecom the, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When you, you own like a service, but mm -hmm. for intellectual, it's That's like, a good point. Oh, Disney owns too many cool intellectual properties. It's sort of like, how does that become anti-consumer? You no, know, you're it's right. Like, you're right. We, I, I, certain, I guess the only way would be like movies all cost so much money because Disney owns all the most popular and now they can charge a million. I don't know. But it's it's hard to imagine how they would uh, infringe on consumer rights. But the great thing is, is that the European uh, all, Europe is a, a much more consumer friendly region than North America. So we'll see what happens if, if it gets to that a point. Much, much yeah. friendlier, yeah. consumer friendly. Yeah. Uh, which also means uh, anti-corporations yeah. and anti-companies. Yeah, all the tech companies anyway. in the U.S. are getting uh, uh, heckled by Europe now. Um, and like Google and Intel and all oh. those guys are getting slammed with uh, antitrust stuff in, in Europe before. Main, in the main issue is here is that, um, I mean, we, we, this is a topic that requires too much, sure. but every country has their ability to, as long as they're not part of the uh, European Union, uh, they're able to um, uh, do economically, yeah. Whatever decisions they want to make, or you know, it's, it's that creates a, a a complicated system in which you know you have uh, you know Switzerland has a lot of autonomy, and just you know because they are yeah. much less tied to uh, Europe economically, yep. and as a result, they can do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. So it's it's complicated. Yeah. It's complicated. How do you fix that? I don't know, yeah. man. We can't fix that in this podcast. We just created fifty states, and then they all have to. We we need to make the podcast at least three hours. Okay, good. To 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 get into the bottom of all this. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's we're not gonna happen there. because tomorrow, when do you wake up? Uh, I don't know. I've been waking up at around seven to post interviews, um, uh, and get ready for the day. So so seven a.m. It right now it's ten p.m. So yeah. you probably you know you would you take a shower. Do I do take, take. I do take a shower. That, that's important, right? It's an After important such a day, yes. like yeah. touching hands and all that, like yeah. Do you I ever get sick it, I mean, from like, meeting so many people? I get sick almost every time. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've been to Europe probably like nine times, and maybe eight of those times I've gotten sick. Don't you grow like immune at some point? You do. I wish. I don't know. I've gotten better about trying to do like fist bumps or whatever. <laughs> um, you want to grow immune? Move to Berlin. Okay. Yeah, because there's. I'll get sick I'm, here. I'm. I'm. In, I'm immortal. No. Yeah. I'm. That's I jump through the window. Nothing happens to me. Okay. Do you want to demonstrate you... that? I'd be, I'd be very curious to see that. No, in action. not today. Today is okay. hot outside. I'm, I'm acclimatized, yeah. yes. acclimated. I yes. learned a new word. Yes. 
Um, I I am so grateful that you came here to yeah, see us, you. even though you're extremely busy. No, I'm and super you, happy. It was it's it's been uh, fun being on the show. You're a, you're a hustler, man. You're just kicking ass left and right. Yeah. And you know you have G2 and myself uh, forever grateful and available. For oh, anything. thank you. Yes. yes. Right, man. Well, if you I, make it to an international event, I'll be able to interview your players. Well, we always make it to international events. Okay. The, 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 this one, the, I, the tricky I situation here. I haven't is, seen uh, you at this studio, uh, you know, this this week. Product, <laughs> is this a good way to end the show? Can, can, can we go back in yeah. time, fifteen seconds? Do you have the <laughs> you have the time machine with you? God damn it! Uh. What am I gonna do with it? Yeah, we were ending it was on beautiful such a, up until it wasn't. Yeah, we were ending on such a good note. I had to spoil it. You know, to to, to be honest with you, I think the better team went oh, from Europe. Yeah. Uh, know that I'm humble. I'm I'm not. I'm realistic. Yeah. And when we beat their fucking ass, yeah. Next split, I'm gonna be the very opposite. Okay, good. I'm, I'm gonna say the better team went there, I'll see you and then I'm gonna Korea. get shot on because that's not politically allowed yeah, yeah. to say that you're better than the opponent, even though you are. But it's politically. I mean, acceptable Red, Reggie and Jack do it all the time. They. They because it's well. the U.S. Yeah. In Europe, we don't understand banter. Ah, okay. Europe does not understand banter. Yeah. They think you're for real all the time. Yeah. You can never be. You know, you can never banter. Never be serious. Okay. Just you know what I mean. Yeah. Always well played opponent. Yes, you guys are yeah. better than us. A lot of hugging. A lot of hugging. That. Yeah. That's important. Very important. Yeah. European culture. That's very important. Anyway, man, I'm so eternally grateful. You're gonna kick ass. Uh, maybe 15 years from today. Uh, why did I, did I see a technical break in the stream production? I literally saw a technical break. Misclick. Fuck. He was trying to help you go back in time for the joke I made about G2. Right? <laughs> yeah. He's quickly pressing the buttons. To 15 years it. from yeah. today, when I get interviewed in the Tonight's show, yeah. maybe you are the one that interviews me. That would be show. great. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? I don't think it'll be on television, though. It'll be, on, Ooh, it'll I'm, be a Twitch I'm okay. show. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay yeah. with that. And you'll have the band behind you. And you'll yeah, be, yeah. 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 we'll all dance. And, hey, how's it going, Travis? I remember you 15 years ago. In my yes. blah, 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 blah. I like that. Yeah. Man, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you for coming. Um, and to the rest of you, I first of all, I don't apologize for this, okay? But I'm going to um, address the elephant in the room, which is that I'm wearing pink shorts, all right? You probably realize because you were looking at my legs throughout the last hour and a half. I want to give you some context as to why this is the case. First and foremost, I have not thought about the fact that the camera that camera there would be directly pointing at my uh, shorts. This is a production issue. I'm gonna directly uh, inform production that they're from this moment on uh, fired on the spot. Uh, but uh, just know that I love you so very much even though I have That's pink harsh. trousers and pink shoes. <laughs> pink trousers and pink shoes. Uh, thanks very much for watching and twitch.tv slash G2 Esports, click Follow to know when the next uh, podcast is happening. YouTube.com slash G2 Esports. Subscribe because we create some of the greatest content. By the way, he, he, Travis is still here. Travis, ain't that right? We create the best, uh, some of the best content out there. I don't really watch uh, a lot of the G2 he stuff. He does. He says he's the best content ever. What, don't you, what, don't you, what is your YouTube channel, by the way? Uh, my YouTube is Travis Gafford. Travis Gafford. Yeah. So go ahead, subscribe to Travis. Go ahead, subscribe to G2. And go ahead, subscribe to... YouTube.com slash world too. I vlog and I do shit like that. So, people, we love you. G2Esports.com slash shop. Thank you for being there. Production, don't piss me off. Three. Thank you two, very much for watching. One. I hope you enjoyed the show. With that said, you know, this show exists because of you guys. We want to teach you about esports. We want to entertain you. And for that reason, please provide us with which topics do you think we should be speaking about? Which people do you want us to invite? And um, yeah, with that said, please head over to g2esports.com slash shop. Uh, we do our best efforts to create the best possible merchandise for you guys. So please check it out, uh, buy anything you like, and see you on the next podcast, see you on the next episode.